so what we've created and what we're now launching is the Accelerate Institute. Uh, this is a model of training for high potentials and emerging leaders, teaching them some of those basic foundational leadership and management skills and preparing them for the next step in their career or taking new managers who maybe are just getting started leading a team and putting them in a position to be successful in that new role. Uh, the big difference between what we used to do and what this is, is that instead of working with just one company and custom building it for them, we run the show and we invite participants from all around a region to come and participate. So the current cohort that we have features 12 different organizations from Fortune 500 companies to little tiny three or four person nonprofits uh, from all around southeastern Wisconsin. Our vision for this uh, was sort of to fit inside uh, a niche that we saw between uh, two big competitive spaces out there. So on the one hand, you have, when you think about professional development and where you might spend money to do that, uh, you've got the Dale Carnegie's or um, management associations or things like that of the world where you're going to go for four hours to the Holiday Inn and spend $800 to learn about presentation skills. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with that approach except the fact that uh, our understanding of what really helps people learn and apply skills in the workplace tells us that a one and done experience like that doesn't really have the impact that you want. So we don't believe you're getting the same value. On the other hand, we have things like university cert uh, certificate programs. Uh, you can go to UWM, Marquette, any of a bunch of universities <coughs> in Wisconsin and get a leadership certificate, a non-degree certificate. Uh, you can also, of course, do a graduate program. But these kinds of tracks, while robust and based on really great evidence-based learning, are a huge time commitment and also a big investment of cash. <clears throat> Any of you have recently gone back to get your MBA or done other certificate programs like that, you may have dropped five figures to make that happen. And if you are like us, small business people, when I did my MBA, I funded it myself. So that's a big investment of time and money, especially if you're building a family and a business at the same time. So our goal was to create something that fit somewhere in between there, something that had all of the elements of what we understand makes learning effective for adults, which means a long-term program that gives participants a chance to actually try the skills in the workplace, get feedback and coaching, apply them in projects that they're working on in the real world, uh, to take it beyond theoretical and transfer those skills in the workplace. But something that wasn't such a huge investment of time and effort that your average professional couldn't afford to take it on. And so the Accelerate Institute was born. Uh, the basic idea is that we do a year-long training program. Uh, each quarter, it features a full day of live leadership training uh, at different locations around the city. And then in between each of those live training sessions, we have two ways that we engage these participants in learning in the interim. One is what we call communities of practice. So if you've ever been a part of a community of practice, this is a casual uh, opportunity for participants to drive their own learning. We do it as a happy hour right now. So uh, about 30 days after your live training event, the whole class gets back together. We have a beer. We talk about what we learned 30 days ago and how they've been applying it in the workplace. And really, we don't do very much talking in those events. We send them uh, in advance a resource like a TED Talk or an article or an interview to get a little bit deeper into whatever topic we taught last. And then when we get there to the happy hour, we buy the drinks, we step back, and we listen to the conversation. So participants drive their own learning in those communities of practice. The other way that we drive learning in between the live training events is through project-based learning. So because uh, we have many organizations participating, those projects are a little different than when we work internally with a company. If we're doing an emerging leaders program at Harley-Davidson, they want the projects to be Harley focused and that makes perfect sense and it's easy to plan. But if you have a dozen organizations uh, and making teams that have four or five people all from different companies or nonprofits, finding a project they can all agree on is really challenging, which is why our projects focus on the community of Milwaukee and Southeastern Wisconsin. So each of the teams that we create is paired with a community organization like the Boys and Girls Clubs of Greater Milwaukee uh, or Big Brothers Big Sisters and those teams then meet with that organization, craft a six-month project that they can take on, 
uh, and then deliver that project and report out on it and what they learned from it, uh, how they applied the skills that we teach at the end of the year during our graduation uh, experience. So beyond just classroom learning, we're engaging participants throughout in a variety of ways, but all told, beyond the eight hour live classroom days that happen once each quarter, their time investment is really, on average, maybe one or two hours a week. So much less intense than a typical graduate program or certificate program. We, Matt mentioned this word in passing, but it's important to us from a business perspective, and I think it will be interesting to you, this concept of scalable. And so when we were looking at our, our current business model, we spent a lot of time on the road. We spent a lot of time away from our families, and every program requires days and days of our time and investment. And so being a small business, you can see where at a certain point, either through multiple programs or vast distances, that can become very challenging for us. And so internally, some of these decisions were driven, I don't want to say selfishly, but, but based on our current need in our business right now. So 10, 15 years ago, say go to Alaska for the week, woohoo, we're super excited about that, right? Now we go to Alaska for a week and it's a lot more challenging for us. And so we have an internal desire to focus on our community, to focus in this area. Now, have we projected out and said, can we do this in Chicago and Minneapolis and Cleveland and New York and wherever? Yes, definitely. But we want to do it well here and that works for us right now in 2016. We also thought that some of the roadblocks we were running into were financial, and Matt mentioned a little bit of that. This is a more affordable approach for folks, and so we thought let's make it more uh, accessible to folks who, who may not have those kinds of resources. And we also thought there's a, there's a benefit of getting folks from mixed organizations together, and that means you know networking opportunities. It's part of the reason you're all here today to learn from one another, and you don't get that in a in a single. Uh, at a single client with a single company. So uh, we, we, we thought this variety of approach too in the way that we sell it, position it, also fit that niche. It works well for us and it seems to be working well so far for our participants. It's one of the things that's uh, a learning curve for us right now as we try to launch this institute uh, is that while we're still having the same conversations with decision makers that we used to, uh, so directors of training, training managers, HR managers and directors uh, are typically the folks who are making decisions about do we invest in professional development as a company, as an organization. Uh, we're still having those conversations because very few of our participants are paying for this themselves. They're going to their boss and saying, hey, I want to do this, will you pay for it? Uh, but at the same time, we're having now a set of marketing conversations that we never had to have before, which is directly to potential users, uh, individual users. So we're trying to learn how to market to high potentials in particular, how to market to young professionals in Milwaukee who are trying to invest in their own development or are trying to educate their employers about how to invest in their development. So suddenly, instead, uh, we're doing a push and a pull that we never used to have to do. Uh, the advantage is that this product gives us access to uh, organizations that we never had access to before. So I mentioned some of these in-house custom programs to build a program, the same framework as the, as the Institute inside a company, they might have to spend $40,000, $50,000 with us and they're gonna need 30 or 40 emerging leaders of their own uh, to make that a justified expense to, to even consider it. What that means is that 90% of the companies in southeastern Wisconsin aren't our potential clients with that model. They don't, either don't have enough people to justify putting together a program like this, or they're not comfortable spending that big a chunk of money to develop their own internal program. So the Institute gives them access, gives all the other uh, organizations out there, or even individuals out there, access to the same content that we teach in those other classrooms and to the same level of customization uh, that we do with those other groups. Uh, so the Institute is priced currently at $2,500. Uh, that's, again, for the entire year-long program. It includes things like meals and materials and things like that. So we are and always have been a flat rate company. We don't do little tack-on kinds of stuff. 
So you pay the one tuition and you go. Uh, we also offer a nonprofit rate, so uh, one of the big advantages that Todd mentioned of a program like this is the blend that you get in a classroom. And so we've been actively reaching out to the nonprofit community around here, and one of the ways we help them to get involved is by offering a half price tuition for nonprofit organizations. It's important for you, I think, for you all to know too that because of the style of our training, we prefer a very interactive environment, and so this. Uh, classroom style or theater style, seats facing forward is not our traditional training mode. We have people in groups, they work through challenges, we use a variety of tools and techniques to engage folks in the learning process, but with that comes another challenge. We need at least a dozen folks in a classroom, if you will, to facilitate the kind of training that we like to train, that we like to offer. Now, it's not a requirement. But we know that if we have a certain critical mass, and we've found that if we go below 12, it's hard to create the right type of energy, hard to create that, the right kind of engagement. And frankly, some of our exercises that we use where people are physically up, moving around the room, working through simulations and, and exercises, just don't work if you don't have enough, uh, enough people in the room. So that speaks to Matt's point earlier that if you only have six emerging leaders in your company using our old method, we were probably not the right fit for you at that point. We feel like we have a solution now to offer. So this product really is an answer to a growing need uh, that we are seeing in the marketplace and that you're probably hearing a lot of people in your organizations talk about, which is there's a big surge of new folks coming into the workplace. What are they called? Millennials. Millennials, right? We all, we're, we're sick of hearing about it. We're sick of talking about it. But it's the reality, and they uh, demand some things that other folks in the workplace are not demanding. One of the things that they demand most is to be developed, to see a clear path for growth in an organization. So uh, I just looked at a study yesterday, it's a, a Price Waterhouse Cooper study, where they asked millennials what their number one preferred employee benefit was. And even more than cash bonuses, not just a little more, 300% more than cash bonuses at number one is training and development. New employees <laughs> want to see a path to growth. And that doesn't just mean tell me how soon I'm getting promoted. It means equip me so that when I get that promotion, I don't mess it up. Help me feel confident as a manager. Lots of folks get promoted into management roles without any preparation to be managers. Some of you may have experienced that yourselves. We hear stories all the time of the classic kind of mistake, frankly, that organizations make. I take my best engineer and make her the engineering manager. I take my best salesman and make him the sales manager. That's a recipe for failure because those two skill sets are totally different. What makes you good at engineering does not make you good at managing people. And so the niche that we fill and that we think the Institute fills is we stop that knowledge gap before it happens. We help organizations build a leadership pipeline so that they've got a pool of talented young people who know how to lead people. And then when it's time to fill those gaps higher up the chain, and they reach down to that talent pool, it's full of leaders, not just skilled individual contributors. Why don't we spend a moment just talking about our approach and how we're getting the word out there. I, I think that's where we'd like some of your, your feedback. Um, so currently, right, right now, and we can walk you through the the website, we use a, we're trying to just take a real clean, simple approach here. Um, and this is our, you, you can see you can download information. We find that giving away content is a great way to get people interested in what we do. So a lesson that you could use, um, a, a, a TED talk that we're recommending with some questions for reflection. We have a blog, there's Matt, and uh, you'll see his face a few times throughout here. But this is content that's little samples of what we're delivering through the experience. So people get a sense as to what, they, what they're going to get, but it's also a learning experience for them without having to pay any money. Uh, we talk a lot about our partners, and our, our partners, we hope, talk about us as well. Uh, but the idea here, obviously, is there are folks out here who trust us with their high potentials and continue to come back to us. You know, earlier Matt said that that gap with millennials, we've had clients who hire us, they're pretty upfront about it, saying we are bringing you in because we want 
to attract great talent and we're competing for that talent out there so if we can show that we are offering this kind of training and poten uh, growth potential for them we think that's a good way for us to attract and retain that top talent uh, the program details basically lays out what Matt has already explained to you which is our year-long process so we focus on accelerating your team accelerating the plan accelerating the message and accelerating your brand. So essentially we're focused on synergy and team building, effective communication, uh, professionalism and personal branding, and uh, communi strong communication skills. And the community's practice and, and, or, and, and project application project are something that Matt already covered. Uh, the investment page, we've talked a little bit about what's on there, but we're, we're upfront about our pricing. We believe that it's a good value. Uh, you know, to go out there and, and go to a seminar for five to eight hundred dollars for a few hours or a day. We think that a year-long, fully engaged program, access to professionals is definitely the, a, a much better value than you're getting in other places. So as Todd mentioned, uh, one of our primary approaches to marketing this program has been through sharing free content to establish our expertise out there in the space. Uh, so we've been building a mailing list, uh, an emailing list, and uh, blasting out uh, non-marketing messages. Just here's a three minute video on how to delegate more effectively. Here's a, uh, an article that one of our team wrote that you can share with uh, managers in your organizations to help them give better performance reviews, uh, whatever it might be. So we're giving away little nuggets once, twice a month. Uh, just to let people know that we're a source that they can reach out to uh, once they decide that this is right for them. The other big way that we're selling or fulfilling seats in this class or that we did for the first one is I drink a lot of coffee. Uh, essentially, I, will, I have coffee with a lot of people every single day, multiple times a day. I'm, Collectivo is, I need to buy stock because <laughs> Uh, it's all face-to-face, -face, and that's the way that we're finding it really gets done. So, again, we want this to be a regional community kind of a program, and that means we believe uh, that the best way to sell it, or the best way to get the word out about it, is small walking. Go meet people and, and tell them what we do. Uh, and we don't sell in those meetings. Uh, in fact, we spend a lot more time saying no to people than we do saying yes, uh, because a lot of folks don't really understand what good training is because they've spent so much time having bad training experiences. And so it's a lot of, no, we don't do that. No, that's not what we do. No, we don't use PowerPoint. Don't ask. <laughs> uh, and it's only when we get done with all those no's that we can finally say, here's what we do offer. And if it's something you're interested in, check it out. With that in mind, something else we're excited about is Alyssa Chang right here in the front row. <coughs> Today is her uh, starting day at Focus yeah. Training, working on uh, selling, promoting the Accelerate Institute. So she's here seeing how we're talking about it today, and uh, she'll be having lots of, you like coffee? I love coffee. All right, there we go. So, uh, so that, that's it in a, in a nutshell. We are interested to get your questions after you have some coffee, so I know folks are excited for that. Is yeah. that where we are, Brian? Yeah, just one quick question for you guys before we, before we break. As we're kind of thinking about questions to ask, um, what are the kind of the specific um, challenges, things that are kind of the, the target points that you're kind of unsure of where we should be kind of giving you some pushback? Yeah, so one that comes to mind immediately is um, right now we've built this program framework on it as a year-long program. Uh, because that's when we do programs internally for companies, that's something we've seen that works really well. Um, we're, we've been wondering through this first cohort if that's still the right way uh, when we're doing it uh, in a program where people will opt in. So would you sign up for a year-long development program or is that too long of a time scale for you? Uh, would you rather see something like this in six months or six weeks? Uh, it's something we're still trying to figure out. The other, and sorry, I'm the, I'm the, the training design guy, so my head's over just there. Um, the other is these communities of practice. We've been doing them as happy hours uh, at about 5.30, and uh, that's been great. The people who show up really love them, but only about half our class shows up uh, to those. And they're optional, just extra enrichment events. We love some ideas about what's the best way to do an event like that, to get people to actually come and take advantage of 
this essentially free value that they're walking away from. Uh, do it during lunch or make it mandatory. I, we're trying to figure that out. And I also think on the, on the sales and marketing side, if you have thoughts and ideas about ways that you think would be effective, we're interested in that too. You know, Matt can only be in so many places or me having a cup of coffee or beer somewhere. So uh, are, there, are there other options for us or, or do you see that as a great way for us to continue down that, down that road? We do have a specific piece that we're gonna just let you grab one of because we'd like some feedback on it too. This is a new marketing effort that we're gonna try. Uh, these are nomination cards. So the idea is behind it is we'll give them to people that we know so that they can give them to people they think would be a good fit in the Institute. So when I'm talking to my buddy who manages at Johnson Controls, I say, well, here's three of these, give them to some high potentials that you know at JCI that you think would kill it in this class and the card basically sends that message so uh, check it out when you get a chance let us know what you think i'll throw a few of them on the coffee table uh, but we'd love some specific feedback on these two so timing marketing reach we're pretty confident in our content and, and uh we'll, we'll listen but but uh that's essentially where we would like love some feedback or get some challenge on okay cool so let's take five and then we'll meet back up here awesome. I didn't know people were gonna so I can get back. All right, so we'll have our, our Q&A time here for about the next 20 minutes or so. Um, and we'll uh, give it back to you guys. Awesome, thank you. All right. So I think Alyssa and Valet will be taking notes. So we're sure to capture everything that you recommend and or ask us. Who wants to start? Uh, yes. So Camille. Uh, Camille, yeah. And I'm interested in um, the certification process. And are you feeling that you need to have some kind of accreditation or validation that's outside of what you will offer? Uh, and what have you done about that? Yeah, that's a great question. So, um, one of the things that we've been getting feedback from some of our participants about is uh, along these lines. So we've had several, several of our participants are in human resources and they have their PHR or SPHR through the, uh, through SHRM or another similar organization. Um, and so they've asked us, can I put these hours towards my recertification uh, for this? Uh, and we hadn't thought about that, to be honest. So we went and we did some digging, we talked to SHRM and the answer is yes, you can. Uh, in very specific ways. So what we did was put together a little info sheet or fact sheet for people who have uh, that certification. So when they ask, we can send it to them. And the idea is now that we, we can talk about that too. Uh, now there are hundreds of those kind of organizations out there and lots of those sorts of certifications. And the good news is that almost all of them, uh, especially at the higher levels, include some competencies related to management and leadership. So. I think it's going to be an intern job <laughs> to go dig and find all of these and highlight where our program and their requirements line up. Um, as far as how we define our certification, that's something we're talking a lot about too and uh, probably we'll be needing to have a lot of conversations with people about it, but at some point we want uh, the idea that you are Accelerate Institute certified to mean something uh, in the city. So. How we get to that point is something that we have no experience with and we need to figure out. But in the meantime, what we're trying to do is um, make it easy for people to leverage what they're doing with us in the organizations they're already a part of. We've also had a conversation, and this is for a different program that we offer with Edgewood in Madison, and they were interested in partnering with us, and I, I think they're that universities are, are fairly interested in it. Uh, one of the questions that, that he brought up and we were talking just a little bit about was this. And local universities, we don't think are going to be very interested in creating that partnership because they may see us as a competitor, um, but you know, institutions in other places that would love to see some additional tuition dollars coming in and getting some uh, credit for that are, are interested in that process. Yeah. Well, Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, I guess maybe part way there from where you are now to certification, is there a way that uh, companies can, or you can help them measure what the value of the training is, you know, short of having the, you know, the cachet of certification? 
we, we currently do that, yes, with our Accelerate Institute participants as well as our, our internal clients. And so we, before any long-term training experience, we provide an upfront assessment. And so we're measuring their confidence and their abilities in certain tasks. We also work and, and survey their supervisors. So if you are high potential, you're going through this training, we're assuming that you're reporting to somebody somewhere up the ladder. So we engage those folks as well. And actually over the last couple of weeks, Matt has been having personalized meetings, sitting down with supervisors of our participants, asking about their progress. Are they applying the skills? These are the pieces we're covering. So we're really trying to give a close personal connection to our participants and to their supervisors so that everybody sees that value. So we have a pre and we will have a post at the end. And, and so those assessments are, are a great tool for us as we design as well. So we, we know that we want to come in and cover certain subjects or topics, but if we see the majority of the class or a majority of a group that we're working with really wants to focus on critical conversations, then we're going to focus on that versus public speaking or presentation skills so we can tailor the message. Right. Um, why do you think that uh, kind of what experience, whatever, has kind of indicated that the small business owner or the person interested in their own development is the same market as the corporate person who wants training? Why do we think that's the same? Yeah, I think that's a, I think that's a really smart question. Um, I don't, I actually don't think they are the same market, uh, but I, but I believe that our product satisfies the same need. And so, um, what what our experience was when we were starting the business uh, was that we were those high potentials. We just didn't have managers, <laughs> so we were scrambling to try to figure out how to do everything. Um, and as soon as we had employees for the first time, one of those <clears throat> parts of everything was, how do I manage people? So uh, this isn't a product, I don't think, for the one person or two person operations out there in the world. Uh, we're not teaching self-management so much. I mean, we're teaching things like time management and motivation, theory, and that kind of thing. But it's very focused on how to be better at leading teams. Um, and projects. And, and projects. Uh, so there, there is a range, I think, where it fits and where there's overlap. Um, you know, if, you, if you're consistently leading a team of four or five people, uh, and that is your business, then yeah, these are the kind of skills you need. And our experience as we were coming up was we weren't getting that training. Like I didn't, I took a management course in undergrad, but you know, and frankly, I took a lot of courses in undergrad. Uh, our millennials that we employ have said to us, we want development, we want opportunities. I'm going to, I see myself working at a larger organization where I can move up to the next step. What is my next step? And so we've had to look for for options internally, being a small business, saying how can we develop these folks? Now, we come equipped to, to be able to teach and to empower and provide skills, but I think that's any small business's challenge. Just So the, the big corporations, they need to keep their talent pipeline full, they need to continue to attract, but us small business owners, we need to say, stick with us, even though you're not gonna get a new title every year and a half and every, you know, these things are, may not be happening, you're gonna, we want you to be with us, and so we see this as an opportunity to tap into that, that feeling and that mentality. Alex? Yeah, on the marketing side of things, I think um, the email newsletter with the helpful content is really good. Um, as far as getting people to send that to you, I know you said you're doing the coffee and things like that. Have you guys thought about partnering with like a YP organization? Like a couple of <coughs> sessions ago, we had a new walkie in here who you know has thousands of young professionals attending events, whether that's sponsoring or partnering, have you guys thought about that? Yeah, we did. Um, we've met with, with Newwaukee specifically a few times, um, just like get to know you kind of a thing. Um, and we did some presentations last year during their um, kind of week-long celebration that they do in the spring. Mm -hmm. YP. Right? Yeah, YP week. Yeah. 
Um, so we did a few kind of preview sessions where we basically featured one of our modules from the program and let people come and experience it for free. Um, and it was good. Uh, we haven't gone so far as to talk about sharing of lists or sponsoring events yet, um, but I definitely think that's a, this is a direction that we know we need to go. One of the things that's difficult, and maybe some of you have experienced this, but there are so many YP organizations in Milwaukee now, uh, and some of them are really tiny and nobody's heard of them, and some of them are a big deal and well-established, uh, and so figuring out where the best focus of our efforts belongs has been tricky, uh, but yeah, you're dead on. We, that's where our target market is going already. Good. Um, go ahead. <clears throat> I wonder if you want to consider, maybe you have, of breaking apart your certification into pieces and doing it like micro credentialing so that you take pieces that people might want to buy individually, that they're willing to take two sessions to learn something, or a session and an online work and learn something, and then you micro credential it at the end. So maybe it's time management, or maybe it's some piece of team management. You sell it individually um, at a, a price that prompts people to say, uh, I can buy them individually for more money, or I can take the whole program for less money, but either way, you can draw people into your program. And the commitment is much less, obviously, on the front end until they get to know you. We have, we have explored that. Internally, we came to a decision, at least in this first class, we saw some challenges with it. One, it pushes uh, against our philosophy of a year, like really investing a significant amount of time and development over, and we don't, again, we, we're not saying a year is the way to go. That could be three months, it could be compressed. Uh, so that's our first reaction, like, ooh, that's, that's different than what we believe really needs to happen. The other is with the, the project component. We were struggling with how to do that. Could we drop people in and out and still have a successful project component with the, the nonprofit partners throughout the community? We didn't see a, a, a way around that, which is why in the first class, right, we, we, we don't talk about this as an option. And, and it's, so this is something that other people are doing, right, and it works. Uh, so it's hard, it is hard sometimes to look at it and go, well, let's not do it, <laughs> because it, there, there are a lot of people out there who are uh, using web-based courses or micro courses to be very successful. Um, We've really struggled with that as a business because what's differentiated us from the start is that we're very people-focused, hands-on, engaging kind of learning, and because we put good sound learning practice into place so that people actually use the skills. Uh, and so the one and done's are something that we've tried to distance ourselves from for a long, for a long time. Uh, so could we do that and still retain the integrity of the educational process? Maybe, and we're still talking about it. Well, and I'm not suggesting either or. I'm not suggesting one and done at all. I think you're you made a very good decision in that regard. But it could be something that's a smaller component. Not once it yet, okay, with no follow on. Definitely not. You're right about that. But you could sell a smaller component that has follow on, that has project, right? But it isn't the full year long. Sure. And, you know, maybe you just see, maybe you have three of them, and they're possible lead ins to the longer. Right. So. Yeah, it would mean some, re meet some revisioning of the project process, but I like that thought where you, you get a, you get a taste for it, and it could be different than the kind of content we're offering as part of the Accelerate Institute. But you like the format, you like the trainers, you like the content you're getting. Now you're willing to invest more time and potentially more money. Could right. you do the communities of practice thing and, and go after a certain topic or a certain micro certification? Like, as in, like, just invite people to the communities of practice, so you're or, not going to... Or maybe that would be more focused on a certain uh, subject or a certain uh, expertise. Yeah, our, our, our time, uh, that, that's typically a continuation of the learning that happened from the course uh, and taking it from a different approach, as Matt said, through a TED Talk or case study or, or documentary or something like that. Uh, but, but, yeah, maybe, right? Like, this idea of... Are you thinking just from a marketing standpoint, or you're thinking from a, like people would pay to come to that and that would be a service offering? Well, I, I kind of like what the direction that Camille's going. I'm trying to think of a way to 
maybe begin to try it out in your current configuration as you're trying to sort out the details of. Yeah, that's that's a good. I need a whiteboard. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, comment and then a couple of couple of questions on that too. Um, so, one, you were asking about the timeline. You know, and I think somebody these kind of address the timeline issue um, from somebody who's been on the other side of that. For me to sign up for something um, that are three months apart for a year, I'm not interested in that because I'm looking at like, okay, what if I show up with the first one and I'm not into this? You know, then I'm like, okay, this is a year long thing. Whereas if it was something that was in a tighter format, I could say, okay, well, next week, you know, maybe better, or you know, next month. It's a different timeline. It's a different mindset as you're going into it. So if it's a tighter timeline, so that's just the comment I have on that. The other would be on, on the project uh, and on the the, the long-term brand. <clears throat> so um, um, I did an EMBA, and we had a project um, kind of similar to what you're talking about with an organization. Um, one of the challenges that was in there was getting the buy-in and the time investment from the organization that you're partnering with. Um, so talk a little bit about how you're going to address that. Um, and then the second thing would be um, your long-term brand will be your students. <laughs> they are your brand going forward. So you got to make sure that it's not just the, the quality of the program, but it's the quality of the student, the quality of the participant. So how will you be kind of addressing that? Because then you've got to fill seats too and make money. Right, right. So you've got kind of the tension that kind of goes on there. Yeah, so, uh, well, so briefly on the project side, um, you know, in the, in the first cohort here, we basically reached out to, to our personal connections uh, because within our networks, there were people who worked for these various organizations or supported them as volunteers. Um, and, and frankly, all of our partner organizations were really excited you know, because what we presented to them was, would you like some help? And they were like, yeah, definitely. But then we did have to have those really kind of forthright conversations with them immediately afterwards saying, great, you want help? Just understand it's gonna be a very limited scope of help. This is not for people signing on to work full time for you for the next six months. This is them doing stuff in their spare time after hours. We're telling them a couple hours a week tops. So. It, this, the project thing has really been a learning process for us in this first cohort uh, because some participants, you know, they're, these are young go-getters who want to impress. And so in that first meeting when they're building their project, it was like, we'll do everything, We're gonna, it's gonna be huge. And then we get halfway into the project and the partner organizations are saying, we're not seeing the results that uh, these teams promised and the students are saying, we're spending a lot more time on this than we thought we were going to. So we're having to go back in with those project teams and push back and say, this is part of project management, right? Learn from this. Don't promise more than you can actually deliver. Be clear about your scope. So the learning is happening uh, as far as establishing long-term relationships with those partner organizations. I'm having a lot of those coaching conversations with the representative at Boys and Girls Club or wherever saying, remember why we are doing this. We're doing it so they can learn. If you want to continue partnering, we want you to partner, but you have to understand that some of these projects are going to be big wins and some are going to be failures. And that's got to be okay with you. So don't risk something that you can't afford to not work out. Uh, I, I don't worry about us having a shortage of community partners. Uh, what I worry about is um, diluting the projects too much to the point where they don't learn anything, where it's just like, uh, we showed up and volunteered at one mix at six event, project complete. Um, the, the, second, the second piece of that that you asked about or commented on is the students, and that's something we're also dealing with at this time. We have one example of a partner organization that got excited, registered four people, and when we saw who, who they decided to sign up for the course, we were excited that four seats were sold, right? But at the same time, we were like, ooh, not, not sure that this is exactly the right fit. So we didn't want to push them away because they're a trusted partner of ours in other arenas. And but, they, but they signed up for senior managers with 20 plus years of experience. Right. And this is an Emerging Leaders High Potential <laughs> program. So we know the content is still valuable for them. We know that they would add a lot to the course. And so 
that was our justification saying, hey, these guys are going to bring a lot to the experience. They're going to add some diversity to our group. So it's not, but, but they walk in and see a bunch of young folks out there and say, wait a minute, what am I going to learn from this? I'm in the wrong room. Right. That's the message we got pretty quickly. Yeah. <clears throat> so this was a, this was a hurdle for us and it's one now we're, now we're having those conversations with the partner after the fact that we didn't want to have in the first place. So this was kind of, this was our first big stumbling block with this, this program. So we're fine tuning our language. Uh, one of the things that we learned is that some organizations use the term emerging leaders and some use high potentials. So for example, if you say leaders at some companies in town, what they mean is director and above. So when we say emerging leaders, they're like, oh, you mean my senior managers who are getting ready to take a step up into the C-suite. No, that's not what we mean. Uh, but other organizations use that language differently. So we're fine tuning our language as we get that feedback and learning how people talk about this. The other thing that we haven't rolled out yet, but that we were talking about is, do we put an application process in place? So you don't just register for the institute, you apply and we decide if you're a good fit or not. In fact, we started that way, then we pulled that piece back because we, because we thought, oh, this is too much, we're asking for too much up front, and now we're feeling maybe we need to, to bring it back to address the, the point you just, you just brought up. Greg? So, on, are you marketing to the mid-sized companies at all? Yeah, we're, we're, we are. I mean, we're at networking events. We're building our email list. We are, we are doing everything we can. What, what kind of feedback do you get from the managers that have identified some of these people? It's the companies that can't, they don't have their own house training, right. HR. I mean, some of the names popped up, there was big companies that have all those resources, but yet they still hire you. What we find is that uh, the, those large companies focus so much on on required training, right? So they have to get the safety training in and, uh, you know, sexual assault and all the, you know, they have to deliver all of these kinds of training. And so what they're not finding the, the, the bandwidth to do is offer the kind of thing that we do when it comes to leadership and development. So that's happening at the large companies. The, mid, the middle companies we do see as our, our sweet spot. So uh, we have manufacturers, I'm meeting with, uh, with uh, two financial institutions this week, so they're local banks and they have multiple branches, but they don't have a full-on training department and they're not developing their folks. So we are really they, do see that paid, as our sweet spot. Are they paying the tuition then for the fee? Yeah, so typically, uh, typically it's the company that's putting that forward. And so really we see there's two, two kinds of companies that buy into a program like this. One are some of these big companies who just use it as a supplement to what they're already doing. So like Baird Financial has a great internally built high potentials program, but they only take 12 people to go to participate in this program and they do it twice a year. Well, Baird's got thousands of employees, so they've got way more than 24 high potentials. So if a manager says, well, I want one of my people in that program and they don't get in, then Baird can say, oh, well, you've got a professional development budget, send them to this local thing. The other are these mid-sized companies that you're referring to. And like Todd said, that's our sweet spot because a company like Collectivo has a two and a half person HR department for a 550 employee company. And they're like, we want to do training and development. I, I got no time to do that. So I want a local partner that I can just say, I trust them, you go here. I've got some money, but I don't have the people to make so it you happen. Do you, do you give like individuals to find it? Do you give them some ammo to go to their boss and say, here's the case profile of what you need to do to sell your manager on funding this? Yeah, and we're getting we some. better at that. Yeah. Um, I'll, to be very honest, like what we have right now is a brochure that we give them and say here, we have two brochures, one for individuals who might participate and one for decision makers back at the company. So we give them one of those and say, you know, go share this. But a lot of it is a lot more organic. So it's like, I, we're not going to get to that point if I don't have coffee with you. And while I'm having coffee with you, I'm going to coach you on how to do this uh, when you go back to have the conversation. And the way we've framed it, and I don't, I don't think this is shady, but the way that we framed those coffee meetings is, I need to get to know you to decide if you're a good fit for the Institute. Mm -hmm. And so as we have that conversation, and, and have we said no to a couple people? Yeah, 
because just like you heard, if you walk into a room and look around and it doesn't feel like the kind of room that you want to be in. So we've said no to a couple people, but that's where we get that, that opportunity. All right, so we've got time for just one more question, and that's the question that we ask every week. Uh, and then Camille has a little uh, preview for next week. So what can we as a community do for you? Uh, well, I mean, the, the easy obvious one is, got those cards in your hand. Uh, if you know somebody that you think would be a rock star in a class like this, please let them know that we exist. Um, but even more than that, let's have, I mean, let's have coffee, but let's, let's talk about the scalability side of this you know we're we're looking at this as a startup and as a way of transforming our business uh, so that like Todd said we're not platinum elite status on airlines anymore we want to be working in Milwaukee and in the surrounding communities every day all the time and this is how we get there so even just in this 15 minutes you guys have challenged some of our preconceptions about what we thought this had to be uh, more of that please would be great Thank you all. Thanks. Thank you. Really engaging to think about. Um, two things. Uh, we are uh, going through some change in our processes at Million Cups, and if anybody's interested in helping out with the coffee process in the morning to make it flow more easily than it did today, uh, it's a service project to Million Cups. Uh, um, we're taking all, all folks that want to weigh in on that uh, to figure it out. So if you've got any ideas or a willingness to serve in that capacity, um, it's right down the street at Stone Creek Coffee and it's a swing by on the way in, but it does require stopping, getting out, picking it up, dragging it in here. So, but if somebody's willing to do that kind of work or share in that kind, that would be useful. And then secondly, next week we have Moolah Pitch coming from Madison. And um, I think they're going to be an interesting organization. They're talking about bringing together that the law is changing about who, uh, who uh, investors uh, can talk to and how they can do investing. And I don't know much about the details of it other than I know that there's the ability now to use um, online methods for um, uh, finding investors in companies. And Moolah Pitch is on the front end of that. Um, so I think you'll be interested in what they have to say. They're looking for companies who want to be on on their Moolah Pitch site. Um, they've developed the technology around that, and um, they have uh, investors who are looking to invest in companies. So it'll be interesting. Uh, yeah. Anybody got any ideas about Million Cups? We're the folks right here, All right, right back there, Matt and Brian and I. You can let us know. All right. Have a great week. Thanks. Thanks. See you next week. <laughs>